Call of Duty games are always highly debated on how good they are, and a lot of those debates surround multiplayer. A lot of you might think COD is a game about guns, but the most important part that makes Call of Duty multiplayer good or bad is the maps, because that's where you're always going to be playing the game. You can't change the maps like you can change your weapons. And there have been many maps throughout Call of Duty's lifespan, but we're going to be looking at the best ones. What is the best launch map from every Call of Duty from COD 4 to MW 2022? Time to bring back memories of the maps that you love. COD 4 Crash there were many great maps in this game, and some people may have wanted shipment here. While it was fun, it wasn't a greatly designed map. It was just really small and made their constant action. It was fun, but Crash is easily the best designed in the game. The first truly iconic map with the helicopter crash right in the middle, it's the start of Call of Duty becoming famous for three lane maps, which worked perfectly for this arcade shooter, where all the action was funneled into the middle of the map. World at War, Castle. Honorable mentioned a courtyard, which was great, but it didn't feel as dynamic. Castle also had an awesome setting. This map was all about power positions and who could hold them. The main one you wanted was the watchtower in the dojo which was dead center of the map, but there was a sniper tower that could see directly into the dojo that made the map more balanced by having counters to fight the power position, and domination was incredible on this because they placed the B flag right in the middle of the dojo which was already highly contested in other modes. It made all the action lead to the middle for epic battles. Modern Warfare 2 Terminal. I'd like to give an honorable mention to High Rise, which was fantastic, but when I think about the Modern Warfare series for multiplayer, I immediately think of Terminal, which was an airport and is from one of the most controversial campaign missions ever, No Russian. That thing was messed up, but the map isn't messed up at all. It is a medium-sized map that plays fast because all the combat is drawn toward the tarmac. People are in the airplane, on the walkway looking towards the plane, or on top of the building to the side of it. More than half the map is inside, but killstreaks still work amazingly on this map because they put openings in the roof so that your airstreaks could still go to work and you'd be rewarded for playing well. Call of Duty has lost the care and thought that they used to put into their maps. Black Ops 1, Firing Range. Many people probably wanted to see Nuketown here or Summit, Jungle, maybe even WMD. Black Ops 1 had the greatest rotations of maps at launch ever and it was difficult to pick but I came to the realization that Fire Range is my favorite map in Call of Duty history. It's mid-sized, but it feels small. I believe Fire Range is about three and a half times the size of Nuketown, but it plays incredibly fast with its three lane layout that pushed all the combat to the area around where the B flag would be in domination. The map is amazing for any play style as there are long lines of sight and close quarters. Then it's also great for killstreaks. Getting a chopper gunner on firing range was awesome. I feel like that's what makes a great map. Fast pace, any playstyle or weapon can work on it, and you get rewarded for getting kill streaks. Firing Range does this just as well as any of the other god tier maps. If you guys are enjoying this video, please make sure to like it right now and subscribe for more Call of Duty and Warzone content. Modern Warfare 3 Dome. And I'd like to give a couple honorable mentions to Hard Hat, Mission, and Resistance. I love those three maps, but Dome was just a little bit better. This was definitely the smallest map in Modern Warfare 3 at launch, but it's much bigger than your average smallest map of a Call of Duty, which I think was a nice change and gave Gave you more ways to play it. The only problem it really had was not wanting to have the B flag in domination because it would create a gnarly spawn trap. You could call it strategy or a map flaw, but every other game mode played flawlessly. This map had just enough verticality to make it not completely linear without creating a major camper problem. This map has been remade a bunch, including in the latest Infinity Ward Call of Duty, MW 2022, but Dome will always be the best. Wait, what? In Modern Warfare 3, I don't know what you were thinking there. Black Ops 2 Raid. This game was very difficult to pick between all the standout maps like Hijack, Standoff, and Raid. But when I break it down, Raid is just a little bit better and arguably the best three lane map ever made made. It's a medium sized map set in a mansion in Los Angeles. It was fast paced without being chaotic, which is a fine balance that the developers have to make. It allowed you to control the action that was constantly happening. They had areas of the map for every playstyle. You want to snipe? Go to one of the rooms overlooking where the B flag would be in domination. You want mid range fights with ARs? Anywhere on the map works. And you want close quarters combat? Go to the middle lane or use flank routes on the edges. A map made to perfection. Ghosts, Freight. You probably thought Strike Zone should be the pick, but it's actually a reimagining of Dome for Modern Warfare 3, and I didn't want to pick any remakes for the best launch maps as they're unoriginal to the game, so that will come into play later on in the video as well. And with Strike Zone eliminated, Freight was the easy choice in the game filled with subpar maps and only a few good ones. Freight was a medium sized map that felt like two small maps put together with a train track in between, and it did a great job of using verticality, giving them 
the map more depth. I had some of my best games playing on this one. Advanced Warfare Detroit. It's relatively small and fast paced, and one thing it did differently than most of the maps in Advanced Warfare was remove a lot of the verticality. This game really wanted you to use the advanced movement, and they made maps generally that had way too much verticality, and that's why Detroit was a fan favorite, because it played more like old school Call of Duty. This was just good old frantic COD that was more about the straight up gunfights instead of jumping around. Black Ops 3 Combine. This was your standard fast paced COD map, but it did a great job of incorporating the advanced movement from double jumps to wall running without making it feel forced and exaggerated. This was Treyarch making an advanced movement version of Nuketown, and they did a great job of using the movement to push the pace of play, making it useful for flanks or creating more entrances to buildings, making it very challenging to camp. And of course, score streaks were fantastic on this map. Infinite Warfare Throwback. Maybe you thought it would be Genesis, but no, that is yet another remade version of Dome from Modern Warfare 3. But hey, at least they keep remaking a good map instead of a crap one. It's medium size that was featured in the beta because they were trying to show off their good content. There was three lanes again, but all the action was drawn to the center lane that was almost like an arena. But if you wanted to snipe, you could stick to the two outside lanes. This map showcased everything good about Infinite Warfare. The game wasn't as bad as some people want to say. It never had a chance with people being tired of advanced movement and releasing COD 4 Remastered with it, and it's a shame that most of you never gave it a try. World War II, Flak Tower. I'd like to give an honorable mention to London Docks, but getting into Flak Tower, it was very symmetrical, which makes the map balanced with no advantages to spawn on one side or the other. There are many maps with issues of one team being screwed if they get the wrong spawn, and a great example of a map like that is Outbanker Fortress from Modern Warfare 2022. Flak Tower is very similar to Hijack from Black Ops 2, where you're going to have two buildings facing each other in the middle that are in higher ground and two thin lanes on the outside but Flag Tower does have areas with longer lines of sight allowing for more diverse playstyles on it. Black Ops 4 Contraband This game had four great remastered maps at launch with Summit, Firing Range, Jungle, and Slums, but with those off the table, Contraband just edges out Seaside. It was beautiful looking, and it was one of the few maps that actually incorporated water well. It had a couple areas on the map you could swim in, but it didn't over-exaggerate its importance to the gameplay. It played exceptionally well in Domination. Black Ops 4 was a game that was over-hated for no reason. It had very solid maps from the start, which is half the battle, and Contraband was the best original launch one. Modern Warfare 2019 Gunrunner. This game only had two pretty good launch maps with Gunrunner and Hackney Yard. And no, Shoot House wasn't a launch map, it was added about a month into the game because everyone hated the map so much and were leaving it. A pandemic is what revived Call of Duty, not Modern Warfare 2019 multiplayer, and Warzone was also better. I may have upset some of you, but I'm just being honest and deep down you know it's true. Gunrunner was actually a fun map to play on. It has a nice flow to it, partially because this is one of the few maps without a million safe spaces to devs added for casual players to protect them. While it technically has three lanes, it doesn't play like a three lane map, and that's because it has multiple ways to get into each lane at different points, making it have a nice ability to flank and outplay people. One of the few maps that actually played well outside of Search and Destroy in this game. Cold War, Crossroad Strike. This was the easiest choice in the video for me. I absolutely loved Crossroad Strike. You guys know how snow maps work. They either suck or are great. It's a fundamental Call of Duty fact. And Crossroads has an extremely fast pace, but that works well with the higher time to kill in the game because it feels controlled even though everything is moving so fast. And even though the skill-based matchmaking is thick in Cold War, I still had my best games playing on this map. Vanguard, Bow Cage. I was having a little trouble deciding on which Vanguard map to put here, so I asked Expert Fusion for a little bit of help, and he helped me narrow it down, and I ended up going with Bow Cage over DOS House, because one map was just for grinding levels out on weapons mainly. Make sure to check out Expert Fusion's channel, he makes some great Call of Duty content, and make sure to comment as Sen sent you. I want to give a shout out to Vanguard. This game was hated by the community, but they actually gave us content at launch unlike other recent Call of Duties, with 16 launch maps and only two of them were remakes. I think they deserve a round of applause for that. So what made Bow Cage stand out? First, it was in a farmland giving the map a little extra color, and I always like COD to have more color in their maps, which is part of the reason I like Treyarch style the most. But Sledgehammer did a great job here. It's a three lane map that is fairly skinny, creating long lanes, but most of the action is drawing to the middle between the two main buildings. This leads to fights over power positions that keep the action constantly happening, and it plays great in all game modes. Modern Warfare 2022, 
Valderis Museum. Is this cheating? It was in the beta, but it was removed at launch because they were in legal trouble because this map was actually the Getty Museum and they didn't get permission to make it based off of the actual museum. Which means this was technically added after launch. But since it was in the beta, I'm counting it. And this may be a hot take and probably some of you disagree and think it should be Farm 18, Crown Raceway, or something else. But I always have fun playing on Valderas Museum. Maybe it's because I've gone to the Getty Museum a bunch of times, or maybe it's because it was great for getting long shots for my camo challenges, or maybe it's because the map looks great. I would say it's a combination of all three of those things. And then it also does a nice job of having the action flow to the middle of the map making the pace not quite as slow. This is actually the biggest map I have in this video, and I think it plays great in all the search and destroy like game modes, domination, and hardpoint. It only struggles with a super slow pace in non-objective game modes like team deathmatch or free for all, but I've always been a fan of objective games, so it works out great for me. Do you agree with all my picks for the best map, or would you change some of them? Make sure to let me know in the comments, and if you like this video, you'll also love the worst map in every Call of Duty on screen here. Peace.